Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at an interesting case where we're going to use a combination of decoys as well as conventional weapons to attack a SAM site. So let's take a look at our scenario. So we have a pair of aircraft, uh, one's an F-18C, the other one is an F-16CM of course, which you know, you knew something was coming. Our F-18 of course is located with a bunch of active decoys and our, funny, our buddy over here, the F-16, is located with some cluster bombs. So the problem is we have an SA-6 uh, somewhere around the Sanaki region here and uh, we want to destroy it using what we have here. Now, some of you, of course, would go, well, if it's an SA-6, you can just drop a JDAM on it from about 40 miles away, and you're good to go. Well, you're not completely wrong. So let's do it the wrong way, and then let's go ahead and come back to it and try to do it the right way. Let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my F-18 buddy. I've already noticed that I've got myself a SAM site ready to go, so that looks pretty good. We'll grab my F-18. We'll go ahead and press Control f one go ahead and click, and we're going to go ahead and launch four of our decoys right away which is going to be pretty effective. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our F-16 buddy and we're going to go ahead and reduce the speed of my F-16 a little bit so that it matches the speed of our decoys. So our decoys right now are traveling 480. Our F-16 buddy right here is traveling about 480 as well. What we're actually going to do is I'll pull him back just a tiny bit here. Just slow down. Of course, at this point, our F-18C is done. So he's going to head back to Batumi there. And meanwhile, a little F-16 is basically going to fly formation with our buddies, these decoys. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind here is that these decoys are at an altitude of a whopping 36,000 feet, and our 16 buddy is also at an altitude of 36,000 feet. Now, you're probably saying, well, what does this look like from the other perspective? Well, let me show you. It looks a little bit like this. So I'm um, looking right now while uh, we can identify there's a bunch of unknown aircraft. There's a bunch all stacked on top of each other, which would immediately make me suspicious as a human player that you're dealing with something untoward here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flag these all as hostile, and it will allow the SA-6 to start its engagement process. Speed up time a little bit, kind of cruising along, getting a little closer, getting within that dangerous range of this little guy right here. And getting real close here. We're getting some uh, fire control radar blasts every once in a while. And you're probably observing that our SA-6 is not firing. Oh, you're sitting there going, wait, what? And that's perfectly within range. I thought F-A-6 is so we're good up to 36,000 feet. Well, it's actually a little more complicated than that. And if we actually open up the little link real quickly, head to the SA-6B, SA, you probably notice that its range is 1,300 miles and its maximum altitude is 38,000 feet. But we have an interesting complication with kinematics here. And that's the fact that when that missile goes to shoot, it has to travel through seven or eight miles of air to get up to the range where it can actually start doing damage. This is called the snap up altitude. So ironically, this F-16 up here and these decoys are completely invulnerable. There's nothing that can, bad can happen to them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this real quick. I'm gonna grab my F-16. I'm gonna go ahead and do order up a manual attack here. So what F-16 is going to do is he's going to put himself in a very dangerous place. Let's pop it over to 3D view real quick so I can kind of prove my point. So he's going to basically drop off the face of the earth, basically pitch the plane straight down while the little decoys are kind of doing their thing uh, way, way up there. Now the SA-6 crew, of course, uh, once the F-16 drops within the snap up altitude, now there's the world's tightest window between where it can take a shot at the F-16 because it's not outside of its middle range and the shot where it can actually go ahead and strike it, like I said, because of that snap up altitude. So F-16, buddy, <laughs> as you can see, is basically pitched straight down down and he's going to basically do a dive bombing run on this guy which you know that's going to be pretty risky if you ask me uh let's see here does he take a shot no nah, there's no way that sa6 is going to get a shot off in time here zoom in yep that sa6 is going to get cursed splattered so our f16 oh 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 missile launched called it so as you can see our f16 is now going to panic He's uh, going to try to get, lose as much altitude as possible, and he's going to cross his fingers royally that this would work. Like I said, once you get into that uh, minimum range there, we're safe again. But the thing is, our F-16 buddy is never going to get within the minimum range before he could potentially be struck by that SA-6. So our little dive bombing taking advantage of the snap-down altitude method did not work so well for us on account of the fact that this is out there. I'm actually going to order him to go ahead and not evade, because if he does evade, unfortunately for us, he's just going to evade right into a more dangerous region. All right, F1, click. Yeah, now he's within the minimum range of that particular target, so I'm not that worried about it. Come around. Come on, F-16. Stay within its minimum range. There we go. So now we're going to come in. Uh, again, we got four or five missiles launched at us, and we're going to not drop in time. Ugh. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. We need a minimum altitude here. What is our current minimum altitude? We're too high. Oh man, this is uh, complicated. And again, you can see just how tricky this particular strike is. It's not to say we couldn't get away with it. It's just to say that notice how hard and how many little details we'd have to get perfect here. Let's see here, altitude too high. I did order him to go a little lower, didn't I? So I'm actually a little surprised with this. Get back down to your altitude. You had one job, man, one job. 
Minimum altitude. There we go. Also, he took a shot with his cannon, which I thought was a nice touch there. And CBU'd. Oh, <laughs> didn't do the job. Cool. So let's reset this and try a different strategy. Grab my Batumi. Team Batumi, let's go. So same thing as we had before. Uh, the only difference this time is we'll change the altitudes. So I'm going to grab my F-16, my handy-dandy F-18, and I'm going to drop them down to an altitude where they can actually deploy their weapons. Whoa! <laughs> Apparently I got a little carried away with the, uh, the fast-forwarding there. Let's try that again. So what I'm going to do is grab them real quick, go ahead and drop their altitude down to a range where the SA-6 can actually fire at them. And what we're going to try to do is basically saturate the target here and then go ahead and try to do our sneaky attack one more time. Keep in mind, at this altitude, we can be engaged, which means our decoys, as useful as they're going to be, are engageable. Grab that real quickly. Here's the tip, by the way. Uh, don't order your decoys to go right to the target. Instead, go right outside of the minimum range. So if the minimum range is like, uh, let's call it, I don't know, something around those lines. Click that real quick. Launch my decoys, and we'll grab our F-16 buddy, and we're going to go ahead and order him to again slow down just a teeny tiny bit, because we want those decoys to get there first, so they're the first priority of the SAM site. All right, decoys are on the way. You can see our F-16 is just kind of sliding ahead. Our SA-6 crew now has a much more interesting problem on their hands. Let me show you why. We're looking out the window, and we can see we have some people basically the same altitude and traveling at about the same speed. Again, here's the fun thing with playing with human players versus a computer player. Computer's not going to know any better. It's going to see both of those targets and treat them basically as the same. So we're going to get a little closer. Again, speed up time just a teeny tiny bit here. We really don't want that F-16 to get there first. That is a really important concept for us. So I'm actually going to slow down even more. Again, we can cheat just a teeny tiny bit with stuff like this. Slow down. Let's see how fast these things are traveling. They go in 480. I'm doing 450. Like I said, we need to make the targeting complicated. And obviously on older systems, this is a little bit trickier as well. Getting pretty close. Getting pretty close. Now we need to go ahead and order up the attack. Let's see here. We need, I think it was, uh, what, 4,000 feet, something like that. So we need to make sure we drop down before we get there to so avoid that kind of oopsie we did before. All right, we need a times 10 speed, I swear. <laughs> so our SA-6 crew is uh, going to start launching pretty much any second now. Um, we're definitely within range here. Switch to his perspective. Uh, see if he's got an idea of what's going on here. Um, nope. Snap up altitude, no good. So in this particular case, it's still too high. So these guys right here will never be engaged by the SA-6 crew because of the angle that we're dealing with right now. If I speed up time just a tiny bit, I still don't think they're going to be able to take that shot. They might try to take the shot at the F-16, but I don't think that's going to happen. So you can see again, because it doesn't take that upward shot, it's not going to do anything. Again, all right. This time, we'll order them to an even lower altitude. We'll pop down to 12,000 feet before we launch our weapons. Now, 12,000 feet is starting to get kind of into the sweet range for most of these classic SAM systems. So even though uh, we're going to be able to get our shots off here, we're going to have a kind of a new problem created. So I'm going to order our F-16 buddy to hold back a little bit. He's already doing 450, which is perfect. Control F-11. We're going to shoot just shy. We're going to fire all these off at the same time. And we'll go ahead and order our F-18 friends to kind of head on out. Weapons on the way. And let's take a look at how things are going from the SA-6 here. Obviously, we've reacquired everybody, just like we expected. The altitudes are well within our range, and the snap-up, snap-down altitude is not a concern. My good friend, the F-16 here, I'll make sure I've already allocated the attack, which I have. We're going to get nice and close. Now, keep in mind, our altitude for the particular attack is what's going to dictate when we have to dive at the last possible second here. So if I go through real quickly, you can see a 4,000 is my maximum maximum. So what I have to do is actually take this guy and order him down to, let's call it 3,500 feet. And we'll also order that to be AGL. Now, notice I saw several explosions all of a sudden. In just a moment, you're going to see another explosion. Now, one thing we're not seeing very well here is the presence of those missiles that are now targeting these two craft. But notice one of these gets really, really, really close, and our F-16 goes ahead and drops, and he needs to stop in the afterburner if he's going to survive. Ha ha ha! Gotcha. So let's make this even better. So that was a pretty good strategy. We did succeed at going ahead and destroying the target. We didn't get a single F-16 to get launched at in this kind. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make it even better. So I'm going to grab these two. I'm actually going to grab, we have a nice little ridge line right here. I'm going to order my F-16 buddy to go right here and kind of just sort of 
hang out once he gets there. We'll also set his altitude to basically super duper low here. You can see exactly where we're going. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to waste a bunch of ammunition on the SA-6 here and then try to strike at the same time. This is going to require a little bit of handy work as far as uh, thinking here. So we know that the maximum range is out to here. So if we launch anything around here at the SA-6, it's going to waste shots on deflection trying to hit it. As a matter of fact, if we were to take our F-18C and draw a line like this, this shot right here around Kobe would be the optimum waste of ammunition because of the, how much of a deflection shot you'd be taking with the weapon. So what I'm going to do is hit Control F1, just like we always do, grab my F-18, go to Kobe, click right there, and we're going to launch one of our seekers or one of our decoys there. I'm going to go ahead and fire another one on this side, and then I'm going to recreate the same oblique effect here and go ahead and launch another one over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and launch one more uh, right down the center here. This will be the uh, first victim, as they joke. So what I've done is that now when these SA-6s fire, they will waste ammunition trying to hit a target that's not optimum. Meanwhile, F-16 buddy, of course, is going to make his way down and basically sneak up the valley to go ahead and do the deed here. Let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit here. And you can see there goes my decoys, and you can also see my F-16, who's going to be well concealed in that mountain way, way, way before the uh, fireworks even start here. Going over to Op 4, you can see we have that nice little split going on. It looks like there's a group of airplanes rather than a bunch of decoys we're basically cheating with here. Let's go ahead and kick it up to military speed. And like I said, we have to basically come around the corner there. All right. Go ahead and grab my F-16, order him to do one of those. Shift F1, he's already ready to allocate. Fantastic. So now if we switch over to the other side and take a look at things from SA-6, now we've got a bunch of targets who are beautifully within our firing. No, they're not. 36,000 feet. Ah, ah now we're in business. <laughs> so now our F-16 is getting in position, and all of our decoys are at the correct altitude this time. <laughs> hey, nobody said this would be easy. So let's go ahead and take a look at things from the SA-6's perspective. Op 4, grab onto them. We can see we have a bunch of unknowns. We also had this one who just disappeared. Pretty confident this looks like a pretty well spread out strike formation that's coming directly towards us. And a couple of those, of course, are going to run into the fact that they're going to be destroyed before anything happens. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the speed a little bit on our little F-16 here. He's doing about 600, and he's at a bit of an oblique. Like I said, we have to just about match the motions here. We can't get there too soon, and we definitely can't get there too late. Otherwise, the SA-6 will kind of catch on to us. So we'll finish up our turn in there go ahead and level ourselves back out meanwhile swing back over to op four here we can see that we've got him and we're starting to launch missiles now what he's done is he's picked the first target which is the target that is going to be the one that is most directly at him you also can see that he has dumped quite a deck of missiles here we also have two missiles coming over in this direction as well trying to strike a different target so we fired Four missiles so far. Uh, keep in mind that most of those missiles will probably miss. And then we pick up our F-16 buddy who's uh, hanging out over here. One thing we have to do with our F-16 buddy is prevent him from doing any sort of evasive actions. If you let him do evasive actions, he will turn himself away when the missiles fire and he will not be very successful. Let's drop down to a loiter here. Notice one of the missiles is completely obliterated. Notice the other missile is going pretty strong here. So now we're going to go ahead and fire off another big stack of missiles. And our F-16, again, needs to be farther away than uh, what we have here. Of course, now that the radar on the F-16 is running, we have a pretty good idea of what we're dealing with here. Now, notice this deflection shot right here. That's a very difficult shot for a missile to make. So I believe this shot will be missed both times. Now, we've already started firing back at that target. Our F-16 is starting to close. But now, notice, we're wasting even more interceptor missiles because we're trying to take this impossible deflection shot here. And then we've got this beautiful oblique shot here, which is just, that is not going to happen. I'm sorry. If you're wondering what I mean by that, by the way, if you open up and take a look at kind of missile endgame here, uh, missile endgame, boop, you can see that uh, they is attacking, miss, again, because they're going to be a reduced shot because of how difficult it is. Uh, let's take a look, open this one up. Yeah, because it's going to be a reduction in that particular shot. So now F-16 buddy, unfortunately, has been launched on, and you can see that he's about to receive a uh, SA-6 right to the face on account of the fact that um, the last missile that went bye-bye here basically went bye-bye at the last possible second. So F-16 is obliterated. So you can see here that even though we were able to distract the crew successfully for the purposes of making them basically waste their ammunition, unfortunately, because of how much time they had in which to engage, it was not difficult for them to put enough rounds out, destroy everything, even with these really obnoxious deflection shots, and then still take a shot at our F-16. What we could have done, of course, is had our F-16 try to be a super sneaky kind of a thing like that and kind of come around, but that would require a slightly different setup. Let's try it. All right. 
So we've tried it a couple different ways. Uh, we've seen a couple things at work. We know that deflection shots don't go well. Uh, we know that the minimum range of the F-16 kind of a thing like that, it just didn't work. You know, it basically flew head first into an SA-6. Had he evaded, there'd just been another SA-6 waiting for him. We also noticed, even though we wasted a bunch of the interceptors, a competent SA-6 crew, because of the short flight time of that particular weapon, it didn't really do much for us. So we need to be even more tactical here. So what I'm going to do is grab my handy dandy F-18 here, and I'm going to drop it down to a strange altitude of 18,000 feet. Now you're going, okay, I'm pretty sure I can know where you got 18,000 feet from. Good. 18,000 feet is going to be a nice little uh, RMS value between... Uh, snap down altitude to maximum range of the SA-6, meaning this aircraft, uh, I should say the SAM system, is going to waste that much more effort trying to wreck our aircraft. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the fact that we have a very, very low altitude device here. Um, our, it's only going to be shooting up to 36,000 feet, which means if we chill above 36,000 feet, we're basically immune from any sort of attack. So if you take a look at the range here, I know that it can basically skirt, skirt around this, hide behind these little mountains that are located right here and go surprise and then drop all sorts of nastiness on our target here. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to go like this, kind of head up this way. Uh, let's see here, we want to take a look at the range. It's going to put me just outside of that range. I'm actually going to drop my altitude here to try to basically tempt it with a shot. All right, grab my handy dandy F-18. Let's go ahead and take our shots. Ooh, control F-1. Fire one to Kobe. Fire the next one over here. Fire the next one over here. And then fire the next one over here. So it's going to waste the maximum number of interceptors here. Unpause. Boom, there goes my interceptors. So now what's going to happen is our SA-6 crew is going to target the one that's closest to itself first. And then what will happen is it'll go for that really, really impossible shot last. See how my F-16 is slightly farther away than the uh, this guy right here heading over for Kobe. So what will happen is I'll take my F-16 and kind of come around the corner, which you'll probably notice, like I was saying, is the SA-6 battery is now trying to attack the closest targets. This shot is basically going to be impossible on account of the fact that there's so much deflection involved. It's not to say it can't do it because it's proven time and time again. And also, if you look really carefully, you'll notice it's already shot down two missiles, just to give you an idea. This is the world's most competent SA-6 crew. So that one's destroyed, and we know our little F-16 buddy needs to get a little bit of altitude and pick up some speed speed so that he can run behind this uh, cover that I have basically positioned here. So grab onto him, F3, kind of come around like this, and then we'll give him a little surprise attack at the last second here. So this SA-6, I completely expect him to be firing his next interceptor, which is exactly what he's doing. Step up to afterburner, minimum altitude, and now our F-16 buddy is watching this little white finger of death uh, basically uh, reaching directly towards him. Notice, by the way, that all of the decoys have been destroyed here. Let's see here, we have a relative elevation of 150 feet. Our F-16 is hovering down at uh, about 400 feet. That's going to be a really tight shot. Yeah, RSA-6 is a lost uh, view here. Swing them back down to cruise, and then we'll finish the job here. F-16 kind of sneaks around the back. Remember, we have to do a pop-up attack here. So the safest way to do a pop-up attack, we can grab this last waypoint, go up to our pop-up attack altitude, and then we can come back the other side and then drop back down to whatever our minimum altitude is. Afterburner, we'll go ahead and grab this one here. We'll set this to afterburner. And then what he starts is a turn in here. We'll do minimum altitude and military speed. That way we don't have to sit here and micromanage every little aspect of the strike here. All right, he's turning around. I don't know why he's turning around. Did he run out of fuel? No, he's got plenty. There we go. Okay, staying low, staying low, 551 feet. All right, make sure we've designed the attack. Why not? We'll let him fire everything as he pops over. So right now, this SA-6 crew right here is immediately regretting its decision to hide in this valley versus try to kind of chill somewhere else. So let's see, we're going to pop up. That is the pop-up point. Afterburner hit. It's going to come ripping over, and there's the SA-6 shots. There's the CBUs. We fire some cannon fire at it as we rip by. The whole entire SAM site has to do a 180 as it gets Chris bloated out of existence. So uh, what have we learned here? Uh, a couple different things. Uh, first of all, trying to do the sort of bait-and-switch DCS method doesn't work, especially when you're working against human players who are going to know which one's a decoy, especially if they go through the weapon list. The second thing we saw is even though those decoys work, they're so slow that they basically all get shot down before they're effective. One thing we did get out of this, however, is realizing that we can use those decoys to basically waste interceptors as we get another aircraft into a position. Keep in mind, too, that because of the way they've changed the way radar logic works, now what will happen is if I'm firing targets in this direction, my F-16 cannot be fired upon at all. By the way, I'm impressed by how fast that crew spun their entire radar around and took that shot. I did 
I certainly could pull something like that. Maybe with an SA8, you could pull it off. With an SA6, I'm impressed. Enjoy.